Some say marriage is just a piece of paper, but it's a document that is valuable, not just for the couple, but all of society. That's the argument Kay Heimowitz has been making for years. People don't know what's good for them. <laughs> uh, but Heimowitz you know, isn't a matchmaker. She's a scholar and says there's an often unexplored side of marriage, one we all have a stake in. What we know is that marriage is um, a very significant, important um, uh, institution for not just individuals, but for the social whole. Why? A lot of it has to do with dollars and cents. There's something built into the DNA of marriage, um, is certainly in the Western world, uh, and especially in the Anglo-American world. Uh, where marriage is associated with building wealth. Uh, when you marry, you're thinking in terms of home ownership, right? Get, having that home, that stable home. So I think it's part of the message of, of the marriage regime. Regime? That's not usually a word we associate with marriage, but neither is caste. In her latest book, Heimowitz argues the breakdown of marriage has created an unfair caste system. There really has been a shift in the way people move up or down the income scale. What we're finding is there's much more entrenched poverty. That is, um, people who really are born poor and stay poor, don't move out of poverty, don't move out of the lower income levels. Kiss. Love and you. most Have of these day. poor people tend to be women. Program, okay? specifically single mothers, a reality that isn't always easy to talk about. Single mothers tend to be low income, and uh, when they have their children, uh, they don't have the resources, either financial or uh, otherwise, uh, to give the children the kind of upbringing they need in order to really thrive in this very difficult economy, uh, in this what, what economists call the knowledge economy, where you need to, to get your schooling done, you need to go to college. But while we may live in a knowledge economy, there isn't much awareness of the link between marriage and social justice. Even marriage researchers are surprised by the data. I hadn't thought about it from that angle. I hadn't thought that um, I hadn't thought about marriage as a public good in that sense prior to, to starting this work. Um, I think that I thought of marriage as a private celebration and um, that was about it. And that's how most of us tend to think about marriage. Recently, the Institute of Marriage and Family Canada hosted a conference exploring the link between marriage and social justice. So do we live in a caste system here too? I don't think that necessarily we'd look upon uh, the situation in Canada as there being a caste system. But I do wish that more people knew that um, if they're going to be raising kids, a married parent family is one of the safest um, and um, most economical ways to do it. There, there definitely is a, a positive economic benefit as well as a social benefit. John Williamson is an economist and former director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Intact families uh, tend to be less costly to the, uh, to the state in terms of dealing with programs or troubled youth, for, for example. So on both sides of the equation in terms of uh, some of the, 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 the positive outcomes in terms of the economy, we see them, but as well even on the government side in terms of uh, social spending, uh, we, we see it as well. The breakdown of marriage has come at a cost, not just to children. Our social safety nets have to pick up the burden. And while no study has been released in Canada, U.S. figures show $140 billion in public spending could be saved if all children lived with their own married parents. In the U.K., the extra costs to the taxpayer were measured at $66 billion. So why aren't we talking about marriage as a poverty fighter? Heimowit says it's partly because marriage has been framed as a rights issue. There was a feeling, and I think you still see this out there, that you're judging women uh, if you say anything against single parenthood or if you just even state these statistics that I'm uh, giving to you. I mean, I have that happen all the time when I'm talking about these, the, the, these you know, this is social science 
at its best, which is not perfect, by the way, but um, at its best, that we, we know uh, controlling for all sorts of variables that children are going to be better off growing up with their married parents. Still, that is taken as a slight. Um, and uh, at that point, we become flat earthers and are not allowed to talk about the science. And that's why it may be time to reframe the conversation. Morozik says we need to make people aware of the benefits of marriage. I think it was um, MTV that did a survey of youth and it showed that marriage and kids and family was a priority for teens. Um, so that's interesting that this is something that's still desired and yet when it comes to learning about the positive side, we don't teach it. I didn't learn it in school and so it really is hidden um, as if it were something shameful. I think that there's, we can get reacquainted with marriage and see it as being positive. There's been so much that's happened that leads us to believe marriage is negative, namely many of us have experienced divorce or family breakdown. Um, we, can, we can rectify that situation by talking about marriage as a public good and talking about it as a positive thing. But that will be a challenge. The last census showed that for the first time, unmarried Canadians outnumber their married counterparts. Um, it's the new reality in what Kay Heimowitz calls the post-marital age. We're, n we're living in a post-marital age because we have a tension between our very libertarian instincts. Those instincts say we are individuals, free individuals, we make our own choices, we are autonomous human beings, um, and we define ourselves, our identity is wrapped up in just very much our own decision making. That is, exists in uh, tension with um, our more uh, sort of deeper need com for communal and social connection. And I think the first, the, that uh, libertarian urge, has, has won out uh, in recent decades. Not completely, and I think the other urge is still very, very strong. So marriage may not be dead, but it's certainly at a crossroads. Organizers of this conference hope people give it another chance and see what's at stake for all of us, especially the next generation. So never am I going to go around and try and convince people to get married. But if you want to get married, and if that's something that you desire, then education is important to know what's positive about it and what can make your marriage stronger. And, and I think it also is helpful to know that you are protecting against poverty for your children and you have increased stability for your kids. Tomorrow on I Did and I Do, a second chance at love and marriage.